questions, please. Uh, can you um, explain about the nhóm chứng là treatment treatment group nhóm chứng là treatment group in the uh, vaccination experiment or mention the so a vaccination experiment would be um, some subjects get you know the vaccine you know they get an injection for the vaccine and the other subjects in the control group they get an injection too but it's just a placebo it's just say water yeah mm. um yeah, so you don't know whether you got the the vaccine or not and then uh, the outcomes are measured um so like uh, they do experiments with surgery so for example you know you get your you know you get the otoscopic surgery on your knee yeah so uh, when they go to do that experiment Everyone goes for a procedure, for an operation. Everyone gets the three holes drilled in their knee. Yeah? But some people get the otoscopic surgery where they clean out um, the kneecap and some don't. And then they look at the outcome. Yeah? Interestingly enough, uh, for the knee surgery, it doesn't make any difference whether they actually get the treatment or they don't. Right? The fact that they thought that they were getting the treatment Yeah, and they then went and did all of the exercises that you're supposed to do after the treatment. Um, it turns out it doesn't. The treatment didn't make any effect. It was the, doing the exercises that made the difference. So it's, it's, you can get some very uh, interesting, um, interesting results. Someone's asking me about the size of the control group compared to the experimental group. Uh, best to make them the same size as you can. Again, about students. Um, so, yeah, we do think that they're pretty homogeneous, and we think they're smart, and they can, you know, figure out what you're doing in the laboratory, right? And lots of times, uh, that's accepted by um, the editors and the reviewers, right? Because they're experimental people themselves. We have a researcher at um, at uh, my university that actually goes. Uh, we have a CBD campus, you know, downtown. And they actually go and use market participants, right, uh, in their experiments, right. So it's harder to do, but they make it as convenient as possible, right, uh, by by going to the middle of the middle of the city and running it, you know, running it. Hi Tom, I can read the uh, yeah, chat box some questions. Uh, the first, uh, still still related to student as a sample. They saying like. May I ask why researchers consider students homogeneous in experimental research? Yeah, just because um, you know students are, are very similar across. You know, they've learned you know, you know the three R's: the reading, writing, arithmetic. Right? They you know are gearing to. You know, they're all doing you know uh, preschool, you know, primary school, middle school, high school, going on to university. So that. They're quite a homogeneous group, um, and they're also very smart. So they are considered uh, to be good subjects, right? They are playing for real stakes when they do an experiment, and they do. Uh, they're probably more able to understand the the setup in the laboratory, right? The complex setup in the laboratory. However, you know, if there's some reason that you, you're sure that the editors won't like students, then, like my colleague at my university, then you can actually go and recruit. Uh, business people right, downtown, but, but you know, of course, that's harder. You've got to put a lot more thought into it, and you've probably got to provide more incentive. Right, and someone's talking about the cost, but it's probably going to cost you more. So you know, it might be you've got to give each of them fifty dollars because that fifty dollars is going to buy them a, a good um, bottle of wine. Okay, uh, there's, a, there's a question so, in you know, my field. Um, The, the financial incentives are very important, right? Um, so I don't think it can affect the experimental results because we looked at you know low stakes and high stakes in that paper from 1999, and it didn't make a difference. So remember, the, uh, the 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 researcher was doing the research in Indonesia and was able to pay incentives in Australian dollars. So the $50 Australian was equal to up to 
a month's pay in Indonesia at, at the time just because of the difference in uh, the exchange rate. Uh, so how long is treat uh, appropriate for the treatment? Well, you, you make sure that the treatment is as long as uh, for the intervention you do uh, with the group, you know, with the, that group and the control group at the same time. So it doesn't really matter uh, how long, but whatever's happening, it's important that the participants don't know whether they're in the treatment group or in the control group. So, um, so sometimes you just can't do a natural experiment, right? So sometimes you cannot do a natural experiment. So you can only do um, the, the, the research in the laboratory, right? Using, using a control group and treatment group, right? So, uh, and of course, you know, some things you can't replicate in the lab. Right? So for example, strong institutional, you know, strong governments in an institution versus strong, you know, non weak governments. So you can only do that in the field during a natural experiment. But we're going to do a lot more on natural experiments uh, next time. Yeah. So when we do the econometric workshop, that's in two weeks' time. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, someone's asking about philosophy. Um, so uh, you know, philosophy is very important. Um, so economic uh, philosophy, um, you know, you know, basic economic philosophy is uh, that there's you know, marginal cost and marginal benefit, right? And that's a very important consideration, right? So you know, if you're, um, you're doing an experiment as a participant, um, you know, there's, there's costs of doing it and there's benefits of doing it. And that's why we provide incentives. But of course, you know, the philosophic question is a big one. We could have another session uh, back on philosophy. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure you're doing it. The philosophy of science. Uh, there's some very famous um, uh, academics uh, that uh, debate the philosophy of science. You know, a guy called Popper and a guy called Kuhn are very famous in the philosophy of science. 